Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, good morning, 1115 service. How are y'all? Good. Hey. Well, I'm Joel. I'm the teaching guy here. I am so honored to get to serve under our senior pastor, Mark Savalos, the guy that was just up here, and his wife, Natalie Avalos. Yes. And I am honored that he asked me to be able to, to kick off this new series we're starting today called Live Wise, where we are talking about, honestly, if you were to narrow down my life to two important, the most important messages I feel called to share, there's two words. One is wisdom and one is perspective. So this is kind of my jam this morning we're going to talk about today. I feel like living wise is one of the most important things we can do in this crazy world that we live in. One quick reminder, this is the last week to sign up for our small groups. And I've been harping on small groups for the last few weeks, the importance of them. So I'm not going to do it here, but let me just say this. Small groups are really important. You need to get involved in a small group. I would encourage you. I know nobody has time for it. We're all busy. I would encourage you to carve out some time to get involved with a small group. And uh, it's just so important to be engaged with the community more than just on Sunday morning. So as you're heading out this afternoon, uh, there is going to be a bunch of tables there in the pavilion. That's the, we call it the gathering place. And there in the gathering place, you can sign up. Just give us your name and number and we'll hunt you down. You don't have to do anything else. We'll find you. All right. So... <laughs> We're going to talk about wisdom, and so I thought no better way to introduce a series on wisdom, which is based on the book of Proverbs we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, than to tell a stupid thing I did. Y'all ready to hear about something really stupid I did? All right. I was 18 years old. That's a good way to start the story. I was 18. I think maybe 18 or 19. I was working uh, for Southwest Airlines at the San Antonio Airport. And me and a group of guys, we were standing around talking, and, you know, we're just guys talk about dumb stuff, you know, do you think you could jump over that and not hurt yourself? Let me try, right? So we're talking, and this guy goes, hey, dude, dude, sh- look, look, and, I, and he told me, look over your shoulder, and I looked over my shoulder, and there was this beautiful flight attendant walking down the concourse, rolling a bag behind her, and the guy's like, whoa, check her out, you know, and, and uh, I didn't think that, of course. I thought, <laughs> what a lovely female, and... Anyway, she sees my face, and she makes a beeline towards me. And all the guys are like, dude, she's coming over. And I was like, whoa, whoa. So I'm you know, trying to stay cool. And she walks up, and she's like, hey. She goes, do you remember me? I said, um, me, kind of. <laughs> she goes, well, I've been looking for you because I had something I want to give you. And she handed me, she dug through her bag, and she handed me a note. And then she's like, I'd... I'd really like to hang out if you're free. And she walked away. And the guys are like, dude, yeah. You know, I'm trying to say cool like this happens every day, you know. <laughs> and they're like, what the note say? What's the note say? And I was like, it's none of your business, right? So I open up. Anyways, they're like, read the note, man. So I read the note. It said, hey, I, I came through here the other day, and I saw you talking to some people about Jesus. And it's just so encouraging to see a godly man. It's so hard to find a godly man. Um, I would love to, to hang out with you if you're free. Here's my number. And the guys were just like, what? And they're like, a Jesus girl for Joel. You know, they knew I was a Christian. And so anyway, I folded up the note and never called her. But I'm just kidding. I totally didn't do that. I called her. We talked for like an hour. And then she said, hey, um, my family and I, we're going to go. We're going to take our boat this weekend and go out to Lake Medina, which at the time there was water in this lake called Lake Medina. It's down to like 5% now, tragically. Beautiful lake. But she said, we're going to take our boat out. Would you want to come, come with me on the boat? And I was like, uh, yeah, beautiful flight attendant Christian in a swimsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Lord is good. <laughs> and his mercy endures forever, right? And thank goodness his mercy endures forever because we're getting to my stupid part. Okay. So we all go out on this boat, and I'm having a great time. I'm like, this is literally awesome. <laughs> like, so many good things happening here. And uh, we're, we're driving around, and we come to this cliff, and there's these people jumping off the cliff. So all these boats are parked, watching people jump off the cliff. And they're like, whoa, you know, awesome. And I'm watching this, and they're like, man, that's so cool, those people jumping. I was like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> so I dove out of the boat, swam over to the shore, climbed up the cliff, Got up there, and I'm looking at it, and I'm watching everybody, and I see the girl down there looking at me in the boat, and I'm like, I'm going to dive. 40 foot high. I had just been to Acapulco a couple weeks earlier, and I'd seen these really manly men. If you've ever seen these guys, they, like, they're super awesome. They jump from like 100 feet up in these cliffs and dive, and I was like, 
I'm going to do that. So I learned a very valuable lesson that day. You can ignore reality, but you cannot avoid the consequences of ignoring reality. Here is the reality. Had I ever done anything like that? Had I ever dove from that high? No. But the Lord was with me. I was certain of it. I just, I had these visions of me just coming up. 10, 10, yeah. Instead, what happened is I jumped, I over rotated and came down flat on my back. I remember going, you know, I'm sinking to the bottom, the sort of, I'm like, finally, I somehow managed to like swim to the top and I'm like, They're like, are you okay? I'm like, I, I, I meant to do that. You know? <laughs> the doctor was like, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Like, what did you think was going to happen? And I was like, I don't know. The Lord was with me. I just think. <laughs> He's like, dude, you could have broke your back. I'm surprised you didn't break your back. It took me like a year to recover from that. The next week, she kept wanting to hang out. And I was like, let's, let's, I'm kind of busy, but I just didn't want her to see me walking around like this. <laughs> Here's the thing about it. Like, I, I don't know what I thought in my head was going to happen, but the reality was I had never dived before, and that water from that height is really hard. And it got me thinking about how oftentimes in life we just kind of choose to ignore reality. You ever, you ever notice that? I think, honestly, if all of us were honest in some area of our life, we'd rather just ignore reality. And, you know, the interesting, the word ignorance at the core of the word ignorance is ignore. When you're ignorant of something, you're ignoring reality in some way. And sometimes we ignore reality just because we don't know. Like, my daughter is nine. Like, there's just stuff about life she doesn't know. And I have to tell her, sweetheart, don't do this. It will not go well. And she's like, why, Dad? I'm nine. I'm like, it, it doesn't work for anybody. My daughter thinks that when I pull out this card, this little plastic card, and I swipe it, bam, it's done. My nine-year-old does not know that they're going to come for me later. (laughs) Crazy thing is some of us are 39, and we still haven't quite figured out. (laughs) They come for you later after you swipe that thing or stick it in the chip or beep, you know. And there's other, I mean, honestly, sometimes we ignore things just because it's too uncomfortable to look at. Like, if we're honest, like, I just, I don't think I want to know what my son's looking at online. And you hear all these stories of, you know, mass shooters, and they're like, well, you know, I just, he was kind of getting isolated, and I didn't know, but I didn't really know, I don't know, I didn't know what to do. It's like, well, the, the reality was, it was kind of uncomfortable, and I get it. Like, some of us have reasons we don't want to look at it. Some of us say, I don't want to know what my husband's been up to. I just, I don't, I would rather live in the fake reality of what we have here. And the crazy thing is, we live in a world right now where you can get away with fake reality for a while. Sometimes we, we ignore reality because we want instant gratification. And we're, you know, the, the reason you bought that boat is because you wanted to prove to your neighbor you're just as awesome as him. And you don't even like your neighbor, but you're like, I'm going to show him. I'm going to get a bigger boat. And then you got the boat. And then, you know, they say the, the two best days in a boat owner's life are the day you get the boat and then the day you sell the boat. So you got the boat and you're like, oh man, we couldn't afford that. And your wife was like, I told you we couldn't afford that. And you're fighting over it because somebody ignored reality. But eventually reality is just so generous. It shows up and goes, I'm here. And some days we end up flat on our back and go, oh, reality hurts. The only thing that hurts worse than ignoring reality or that, that, that hurts worse than like reality is, the, is having ignored it for a while and then it catching up to you. So the thing about Proverbs and and, and wisdom is I really believe that wisdom is the way that we can get ourselves in line with reality and particularly God's wisdom. If you think about it, God made this world and he made it to operate on certain principles. Okay. And a principle is not a rule, right? A principle is simply this. If you do this, you're going to get this. So like Newton's third law of motion, do you remember studying that in school? Probably not, but it's basically for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Hey, y'all do remember it. Good job. 
something we actually use in school. But it, it applies to life, right? So when you do something over here, there's going to be something over here. And the beautiful thing about the Proverbs and what King Solomon says is he says, guys, here's the thing. This is the way God made the world. And whether you like it or not, the reality is if you do this, you're going to get this. So here's an example of what a, a, a principle looks like. King Solomon says, the borrower is slave to the lender. Now, I, this is great because he doesn't say taking out debt is a sin. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> Thanks, we'd all be in trouble. But he's saying, just know this. Sometimes you may have to take out a loan, but if you do take out a loan, they're going to come a knocking and you're going to be a slave to the person who owns your debt. And they have every right to ask for their money. And you go, well, come on, man, I'm a good person. Yeah, but you took their money and you used it. You've got to pay it back. So he's saying, the borrower is always going to be a slave to the lender. Another one of my favorite Proverbs is this. If you, great, greet, excuse me, if you greet your neighbor loudly early in the morning, it will not be received well. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. How's everybody? Yeah. And you're like, just shut up. I'm trying to get my coffee in me. And this Proverbs, right? So it's not a rule. And the beautiful thing about principles is they work all the time. But it's, an, uh, it's key to understand that sometimes when things aren't working out in our life, it's because we don't understand a principle that God has put into place. But God has given us everything. It says he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. And it's right there. And I believe that Proverbs is one of the greatest books that you can use to get that wisdom. In fact, I've heard it said that Psalms, if you want to learn how to get along with God, read through the Psalms. If you want to learn how to get along with people on earth, read through Proverbs. And what I would encourage you to do this month, because we're going through the Proverbs, today we're going to start with Proverbs 1, is I would encourage you to read the proverb that matches up with the date that we're on. So there's 30 days in September. But there's 31 Proverbs, so you get a bonus there. But I would encourage you, like today, go home and read Proverbs 1. Now, men, this is a really good chance for you to step up and be a spiritual leader. You've tried to figure out how to do it. This is a great opportunity. I'm telling you, you need to do this. You say, well, Joel said we need to do this, so we're going to do this, okay? I would encourage you, read this to your family. Now, I also understand they're going to fight back. You know how I know? Because when my dad did this to us, I fought back. Like, I don't want to do this, dad. He'd be like, sit down, shut up, and read. And man, I'm so glad he did because I can't tell you how many times in life a proverb has come back to me and I'm like, wow, that's why that worked out that way. King Solomon said it right there. The Bible said it. And listen, men, if you're going, well, I don't, I don't read very good. I get that. Look, one of the tricks my dad had is he would have us each read a verse along like one at a time. So he would say, Joel, you're going to read Proverbs 1.1. 1, 1. Karis, you're going to read Proverbs 1.2. Jonathan, you're going to read Proverbs 1.3. Janet, my mom, 1.3. And he would only have to read like every five. <laughs> so he had time to prep. So maybe that's the way you go. Well, right, we're going to do it. I'm gonna, I'm, there's a little secret tip for you. But I would encourage you, read through the Proverbs because there's so much truth in there about how to thrive in this crazy world and how to live in harmony with reality. So this is how King Solomon starts out his book. Proverbs 1, he says this. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. Now, quick thing about Solomon, he was the son of King David, and God actually showed up to King Solomon and said, Solomon, what do you want? I mean, that's like our dream, right? If God asked you, what do you want? And we'd all answer, money, limitless money, right? Nope, King Solomon said, I want wisdom. I want to know how to rule this, this, this world and, that, I've, that you've given me. And, and God was so impressed with his answer. He's like, oh, that's an awesome answer. I'm going to give you wisdom and you're also going to get power and you're going to get wealth beyond your wildest dreams and you're going to get influence and you're going to do everything your heart desires because you have wisdom. So this is Solomon. He says, I'm the son of David, king of Israel. The reason I'm writing this is so that you'll know wisdom and instruction to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing in righteousness, justice, and equity. Now, it's interesting because in our culture right now, there's a lot of talk about this, justice and equity, not so much about righteousness, but justice and equity. And a lot of times we say, man, we want justice and equity. But let me tell you this, any justice and equity that is not founded in the principles that God has put into place is not going to turn out the way you want them to turn out. It's actually going to turn out into tyranny and people forcing you to do things that aren't going to turn out well. So you've got to go with what the biblical principles say. Otherwise, it's not going to turn out well. So he says this, to give prudence to the simple knowledge, and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. This is the key point here. Now, this word fear, some of us grew up thinking it was fear that God was going to come and crush us with his thumb because we were such bad people. Listen, when you're in Christ, there's therefore no now, now no condemnation. Your sins are forgiven. Fear at that point takes on a different meaning. Fear means a deep sense of reverence for the fact that God created the world 
and he knows how it works. And when you get your life in line with what he says works, you're going to thrive in this world he created, even if everything around you is a dumpster fire. You're going to be okay because you're using wisdom. And that's what the fear of the Lord is. It's a deep sense of reverence that God knows what he's talking about, and he put it in the word of God. And that's why we Christians, we harp on the Bible so much. We're like, why are you so... Because the stuff in there is life-changing. I mean, I really believe it's life-changing. But he says this, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And we've all met somebody like that. We're just like, hey, Joel, if you jump off that cliff and try and dive, you're going to end up flat on your back and it's going to hurt. And I'm like, yeah, who do you think you are to tell me? And then I go and do it. And I'm like, Ugh. and we're all watching like, dude, what did you think was going to happen? Like, honestly, what? we've all have people in our lives who are like that. And so th- this it's, rec- it's important to recognize what a fool is. Okay, so there was this guy named Carlo Cipolla. He was an Italian economist. And he wrote this book. It's a fascinating, it's a tiny little book. It's called The Five Basic Laws of Human Stupidity. <laughs> now, don't shoot the messenger. I know some of you are like, oh, don't use the word stupid. Okay, look, but I'm going to explain something. There's a deep truth in there, okay? He says, Chipola says this. He's an economist, so he loved charts, okay? Chipola says there's four kinds of people in the world. He says there are people who help others. There are people who hurt others. There are people who help themselves. And there are people who hurt themselves. And then he describes these four kinds of people. And I'm going to use the terms he uses, but I think Solomon actually uses the more accurate term in the Bible. He says, first of all, there are helpless people. They help others while they're hurting themselves at the same time. They just get taken advantage of all the time. I think King Solomon calls them naive. Naive are people who are just don't realize that there are people who literally do want to take advantage of you. And you go, there's nobody that would do that. Yes, there are some evil people out there with evil intent in their heart. Now, again, listen, people are never the enemy. It's the spirit behind what the people are doing that's the enemy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But there are people who have evil intent in their heart. And the crazy thing is, oftentimes the most evil people, this is the line they'll use. I'm doing this out of compassion for everyone. This is for the good of all don't be naive. Naive people say, oh yeah, okay. And then they let other people take advantage of him. Then he says, there's what are called the stupid. Let's call it foolish because that's what King Solomon would call it. Foolish people hurt themselves and they hurt others at the same time. Then he says, there are the wicked, or he said, he calls them bandits. King Solomon, I think, calls them a wicked. The wicked hurt others while helping themselves. And then he he says there are what are called intelligent people, which I think is what King Solomon is saying are wise people. Wise people do their best to help others, help themselves while they're helping others. So not only do you say, I'm going to take care of my family and make sure that they're getting my best, but I'm also going to make sure that the people around me are getting my best. Now, one of Carla Chipola's rules is this. Listen, this is super important. You will always underestimate how many stupid people there are in the world. There are always going to be more fools in the world than you can imagine. And here's why he says, he says, the reason is because anybody that has any amount of intelligence would go, why in the world would you do something that hurts yourself and others? Like it's one thing to be a bandit and hurt others and help yourself, right? It's one thing just not to know, but why would you do something that hurts yourself and others? That is what a fool is. In fact, here's, here's two of his laws. He has four of them. He says, always and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid individuals in circulation. <laughs> King Solomon essentially says the same thing. He says, there are always going to be people who just choose foolishness. And the best thing you can do is stay away from them and try and protect yourself, which is rule number four. Non-stupid people always underestimate the damaging power of stupid individuals. You can fill in the word foolish if you don't like stupid. In particularly, fools, foolish people constantly forget that in, uh, excuse me, non-stupid people constantly forget that in any time and place and circumstance, dealing and or hanging out with stupid people always turns out to be a costly mistake. Which King Solomon also said, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools always suffers harm. And some of y'all know that because you weren't there doing the bad, you weren't doing the bad thing, but you were with the people doing the bad thing. And now you're paying the price for it. I have so many parents who are like, my, my son's such a smart kid, but he hangs out with these troublemakers. I'm like, then I don't know that your kid's a smart kid. 
Because a companion of fools always suffers harm. And that's what Chipol is saying. So what he's saying here is, listen, the best you can hope to do if you have any amount of intelligence is recognize there are going to be people that are always going to do things that hurt themselves and hurt others. Fools. And the best thing you can do is just try and protect yourself from them and mitigate loss as best as possible. Which is really hard because when they're running the government. But so he goes on. King Solomon goes on, and this is what he says. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. And what this is encouraging to me is, he's saying at any given point in the, in the history of the world, wisdom is always available to you. It's, it's somewhere in the noise, but you have to seek it out in the noise. It's out there. It's calling out, I got some wisdom. But you got to hear it amongst all the insanity around you. And you, it's not necessarily going to be self-evident. And here's the really important thing. What most people are doing most of the time is not going to be the wise thing. That's true. Think about that. Yeah. What most people are doing most of the time is not going to be the wise thing. And there are always going to be people telling you to not do the wise thing because they're bandits. And they're going to say, here's what you need to do for the good of everybody while I take everything from you. And we're the naive ones or the fools for believing it. Hmm. And listen, hmm. let's be honest here, okay? This, this Christian faith thing, I, it like permeates everything I do. And I believe that it should permeate everything we do. It should affect every decision we make, right? We need to recognize that there are people that do not have the best in mind. And they will intentionally try and shove the wrong thing down your mouth. And here's the thing. Listen to this verse. He says, how long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? And how long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Do you know what a scoffer is? It's somebody who actually makes fun of people who are being wise. And we live in a world right now where ups, right is wrong and wrong is right. And people are telling you, how could you be so unloving and hateful? And you're going, actually, that's the most loving thing you could do. And they rebuke you and they call you out. But really, it's like, literally, it's like everybody's running this way and you're running this way. And they're like, what kind of a fool are you running against the current? And you go, there's a cliff over there. And on the bottom of it, 40 feet down is some really hard water. <laughs> and you go, I just can't do that. And you think you're better than us? You self-righteous Christian. And you're like, no, I don't think I'm better than you. I just really don't think that's wise based on what the word of God says. But there are always going to be people, people who are going to make fun of you for choosing the wise choice because they're scoffers. Right. If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. Now, this is where it gets super intense, okay? I will make my words known to you because I called you and you refused to listen to wisdom. I've stretched out my hand and no one has heeded it because you've ignored all my counsel and have done none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. Well, that's not very loving. I will mock when terror strikes you. If you ignore reality, I'm, I can't do anything but stand back and laugh at you because I tried to warn you. What did you think was going to happen? And this is what he says. For the simple are heavy word, killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. Now, this word complacency is super important because complacency just simply means I don't want to get involved. And we're at a point in our world right now where let's really be honest. We've got some choices coming up where we've got choices that, I mean, honestly, we have two horrible choices in front of us in terms of the election. I'm going to be real honest. Everybody calm down. I'm going to talk about both sides, okay? Everybody take a deep breath. Don't throw anything at me. Let's talk about this rationally. Let's remove our biases. Let's remove the way we voted growing up. Let's remove the way mom said to vote because us people like us always vote this way. Let's look at this rationally in terms of God's wisdom, okay? We have on one side Harris Walls. One of the things that they're promoting is the ability for children that are just still growing up and mature and need to just grow up to, without asking for their parents' consent, cut off body parts, take hormones that will irreparably damage them forever. Now, this is interesting because the first thing God asks us to do in Genesis, he says, I want you to be fruitful and multiply. If Satan wanted to attack humanity, what would be the smoothest way for him to attack humanity? Go after the first command. Make people unfruitful and unable to multiply. And I'm telling you, listen, you can chop off whatever body parts as you want, but a man is never going to have a baby. 
A woman can only have a baby and you can throw a punch, punch, enough, punch a bunch of hormones into a woman. She's, the reality is, and you can make up all this scientific gobbledygook, the reality is God made us man and woman and he made you the way you are for a purpose. He wants you just like you are. And you may feel really uncomfortable in your body, but he made you for a purpose. And any government that says, we want to promote that and also not have any parents who have maybe some wisdom say anything about it because that's hateful. And well, wouldn't you rather a live child than a dead child? Wouldn't you rather a live transgender than a dead child? That's a false argument. There's also studies that have shown that's just not true, right? And what's going to happen is eventually reality catches up to you. 10, 15 years from now, we're already starting to see it. People are going to go, what the, I don't like this. And I've like forever damaged my body that got, and now I can't go back and fix anything. Why didn't anybody tell me different? In fact, why did the government even promote that for me? That's one evil we face. One foolish, foolish thing we face and people doing it in the name of compassion. Let's talk about the other guy. Donald Trump is a toxic, immoral human being. Straight up. Remember, let's remove our biases. He is a horrible, horrible person. He's absolutely toxic. So really, our choice in this election is this. <laughs> Choose your evil wisely, folks. <laughs> We're stuck. This is the best we could put up there. And listen, he's toxic, and here's my take on it. Chemotherapy is also toxic. But sometimes it's what it takes to get rid of cancer. And there comes a point where there's so much evil around, you literally just have to choose to hold your nose and choose the lesser evil on certain things. And it's really ugly and it's messy. And here's the thing, not being complacent is going to not go well either. Saying, I just don't want to get involved. To not vote? Again, people get really awkward when I'm talking about politics, but I'll I'll go after both sides here because we have two bad choices. So you literally have to choose your evil wisely. You have to decide, all right, in terms of wisdom, and and don't believe lies. If somebody has said they're going to do something for years and then they flip-flop two months before the election, no. Okay. You got to decide. What's the best person that's going to help build up not only my family, but also build up the community around me and not do things that are destroying them forever? That's what wisdom requires. And it's a really... I understand there's a lot of emotions involved and mama told me we always vote this way. I get that. But the the rules have changed on what we're dealing with in terms of political parties. And as Christians, we've got to be wise, y'all. We got to say, what is the best thing right now? And listen, I'm not trying to say the church should rule the world, but I am saying, man, if somebody's doing irreparable harm to themselves or hurting themselves and you see it as a wise person, you got to speak up. And there's going to be scoffers who are going to be like, you're such a hateful person. Then let it be. We'll see how it goes at the end. King Solomon also says the end of a matter is better than the beginning. But here's the the beautiful thing about all of this. If you'll listen to wisdom and dwell, then you're going to actually dwell secure and you'll be at ease without dread of disaster. There's a very good chance that the world is going to choose foolishness. And it only takes a few foolish people to screw up the whole thing. But here's the thing. If you'll follow God's principles in spite of what the world around you is doing, it can be a dumpster fire around you. But you can walk out not even smelling of smoke because you've been living by God's principles and wisdom. And you've got to decide, I want to be wise. And I want to make sure that this stuff he's teaching really does apply. I want to apply it to my life because here's my final point, okay? Wisdom is the path to living in harmony with reality. Specifically, God's wisdom is the path to living in harmony with reality. It helps you stop unnecessary suffering. The reality of life is that there's some suffering in life that's just inevitable because we live in a messed up world. There's some, there's some, I call it necessary suffering. And there's this verse in Acts that I hate, but it's in there, so I got to deal with it. It says, through much suffering, we enter the kingdom of God. I wish it said, through much Krispy Kreme, we enter the kingdom of God. (laughs) Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. But it doesn't. It says there's some amount of suffering that as you go through it and you trust God through it, he's going to actually build you stronger and grow you through it. So there's there's necessary suffering. But there's a whole bunch of unnecessary suffering in the world that we cause for ourselves just because we didn't understand the way God's principles were. Or we just went against them and we knew we were. And we knew at the time, we're like, yeah, I had the warning signs when I started dating him, but, oh. 
right? Or, yeah, I knew I really couldn't afford that trip, but I just really needed a getaway. We got to be wise, y'all. And when we choose wisdom over foolishness, man, this is how you rise above. And the beautiful thing, it says, you will let your light shine before men and they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. While everything around you is burning, people are going to come to you and be like, how are you doing that? And you're like, hey, it's not me. It's Christ in me. He's given me everything I need for a life of righteousness and godliness. And man, all the success you're seeing in the physical really is a picture of the success I had in the spiritual because I chose wisdom. I chose wisdom over all other things, over what the crowd was saying, over how I would look, over trying to impress people, trying to impress people I don't even like. I chose wisdom over that. And that's how you rise above and you stand out in this, as Paul said in, the, in Philippians we read last month, in this crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And that is my prayer for all of us. Guys, we have got to be wise right now. We've got to choose wisdom. We've got to vote for people as best as we can that are choosing something sort of kind of resembling wisdom, kind of, maybe. And when we do that, man, that's how we, we make sure that like the, the wise, we're helping ourselves and we're helping others. And that's what wisdom is. And in the middle of that, I believe we're bringing glory to God. And when we bring glory to God, everything's in its right place. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that you have given us wisdom. You didn't ask us to figure this thing out on, on our own. You've given us principles and things we can follow. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just awaken in us desire to, to face reality. Reality is going to catch up at some point. I just pray you would awaken in us the fact that we need to face reality. And even if it's uncomfortable, trust that you're going to give us wisdom to face the reality in our marriages, in our relationships, with our kids, with our finances. And as we face reality, Lord, you're going to awaken in us just amazing things and you're going to take us you're going to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we could ever ask or think if you're here this morning you've not given your life to christ i'm going to say a prayer in just a second i'm going to give you a chance to get that right uh, if you say this prayer and you mean it in your heart god is going to come and transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness set you up with him in eternity so let's all say this prayer together lord jesus we repent of our sin we turn from our way we turn to your way help us walk in your truth Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources for you in the back to help you on your journey. You guys, I pray y'all will walk in wisdom. Ask this week, is this wise? Is this wise? And I trust God's going to give you guidance and direction. Be blessed. You're dismissed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings. <laughs>